Hey friends, I'm Daniel Nesbitt and this is Designing a Sans Serif Typeface and in this episode we finally, finally, finally get to talk about kerning, which I'm sure you were super excited about since the first day and the first episode of this whole series. Um, now I'm going to temper some expectations a little bit here because one of the things if you've been following along and if you've been designing your own typeface alongside this, which first off, awesome, congratulations and I'd love to see it if you have been. Um, make sure to message me or uh, leave a comment below. But um, one of the things that I, I continually preach is that it's a good idea to get your side bearings in order before you even think about getting to kerning. Um, for the most part, a well side bearinged font, if that's uh, such a, a word, um, is going to save you a lot of headaches when you get to this step. Uh, so in the last episode, one of the things that I had pointed out was that Glyphs does have a neat little trick here that you can use your control characters to uh, basically go through and, and figure out your side bearings, which is, is kind of nice to have. Um, so I'd been kind of playing around with these a little bit and, oops, not 5, 55, there we go. Um, I did decide that I wanted to kind of respace these out a little bit, actually... Might have even been 45, might have been 45 that I wanted. Um, but the nice part about this is that when you go and you do something like what I just did here, uh, and if I back out a little bit, I do get these little uh, notifications here that uh, my side bearings need to be updated. But the good part about this is that um, I'm able to basically go through and in very uh, little work uh, effectively uh, update all the side bearings there. Um, which makes it a lot easier that I don't have to go through and do every single one of those characters. Now, what's awesome about glyphs as well is that, um, actually, sometimes too, I should add, it does get a little bit cranky, so let's get those out of the way there. Oh, and the P2. Um, but one of the things that I love about glyphs is that in addition to doing that for side bearings, we can do that for kerning pairs as well. So... I'm going to put up a couple of, uh, I guess, what we'll call problem children here. <laughs> um, and that's going to be the uh, the A and the W and the A and the V. So for this, you can go through and rather than doing an instance or, or saying, um, you know, to use the kerning, uh, like what we did for the side bearing here, where you, uh, like for the V, I've, I'm using the Y here, um, you can actually go through and create kerning pairs. So this is a little bit different, but it's effectively going to be the same once you see how this works. So with the cursor to the left of the letter that I want to use, I'm going to go through and I'm going to add uh, that to what I'm going to call the V group. And I'm just going to use this as my control group for characters like the W and the Y, I guess in addition to the V, um, for my kerning pairs here. And what I can do is, I know from my notes here, that about negative 80 points was was where I was happy with. Um, and I should add too, while I'm down here, is this lock next to each of those numbers means that I'm going to be updating this for the uh, global group. So anything that I assign to the V to the A kerning group, or the um, A to the V kerning group, if we go the other way, um, it's going to be 80. Now, if I hit this unlock, that means I'm making an exception for a particular group, and it's not going to update it across all of the other uh, kerning groups that are with this. So keep that in mind if you're doing this. But as I go through, I can uh, basically do the same thing then for the Y, and I can do the same for the W. And there we go. We have our first kerning pair. And so the neat part about this is, and if I select any one of these letters now, because they all have the lock on, I can go through, and as you can see, I can adjust that. So similar to the side bearings where I just uh, showed at the beginning of the episode where I was able to go through and update one setting and have it apply to a number of characters, we can do the same here with um, kerning pairs as well, which is actually really handy if you're going to be managing a lot of kerning pairs. Now one other thing that I will note is that uh, Glyphs does come with a kerning uh, window here. So if you do need to keep track of this as you go, you can see obviously that I've, I've got all my kerning pairs here. And this is just a handy way to keep track of everything as you go. So I actually do have one rogue one here. I'm actually just going to go ahead and remove that one. Uh, we'll be getting to that one in a moment. Um, so with that, we're going to go to the next pair that I had, which was the T. So in this case, I already had something that I was trying, but I'm actually just going to go ahead 
and remove that because we don't need to worry about that. I think that covers all of them there. So for this one, we're going to do the O and um, actually, I think I'm gonna do it this, we'll go this way. So this way I get both sides of the character just like what we did before. Uh, for this one, I don't think we necessarily need to go to uh, the extreme that we did with the uh, the V and the A there, but I think we do need to bring this down a little bit. So to start, I'm just going to take a wild guess here um, and maybe do negative 40. So that's about half. It doesn't seem too bad. Um, that actually seems all right to me and granted this is also where your proof comes into play as well because you can use your proof to really dial this in a little bit more as well but one other character that i know also is going to have some issues here is going to be the d so for the d um, i actually already have the o in there but uh, again you can see if i just play around with this a little bit you can see that i've got the d there as well uh, another one that we're probably going to run into would be the C and the G. So for the C, we're, I think for the C, I'm just going to do this side of the kerning group. And I think I'm going to do that for the G as well. Uh, similar to what we were doing for the side bearings, you're not always going to use the same side bearing on each side of a letter. And what you will also find is that you're probably going to be doing this mostly for letters that are angled letters, like the uh, V, W, X, Y, um, or round letters like the O, the one side of the D, uh, the C, the G, so on and so forth. Um, but I mean, already that's that's looking pretty decent here, and I'm pretty sure, because this happens, um, I do tend to forget characters. Looks like the Q is going to be one of those today. So we're just going to go through and set that up. And for the Q, I'm actually comfortable using, again, both sides of the O there for that. I think that'll be all right. So I'm just going to jump back over here real quick and take one more look. Arguably, I could do one for the S and use the S um, or use the O for the S. Sometimes this works. This is kind of one of those things where your mileage may vary a little bit. Um, that does feel a little tight though, so I'm actually gonna take that out. But since I have the S here, I think maybe like negative 20 isn't so bad. I am kind of looking a little bit at, at these, these corners here where it kind of meets. Um, I think it benefits from something just a little bit looser than that. So not too bad. Um, another thing for the T, let's see here. So we do have this, and we have that. <laughs> um, so for the A, we're gonna do the kerning groups again. Um, and I'm actually gonna go ahead, move this a little bit closer to the center of the screen there. Um, I'm just gonna throw my H's back up at the top here, but for the A, and really, if you're wondering where I'm coming up with these these numbers so far, I'm just guessing. Um, that's my secret. I uh, hate to break it to you if you thought I was being a little bit smarter than that, but that's my secret. Um, but the other thing, too, like as I'm doing this, is I can go through and I can also compare this to other letters as well, like the A and the V here. Um, one other thing that also helps that I will point out is if I bring up my little preview menu down at the bottom here, um, I can go through and I can blur this a little bit. And I think I've talked about this in past episodes where this can be helpful if you're just looking for blobs of of color or weight in your typeface. Uh, this works for character construction. This also works nicely for uh, something like this where I'm trying to uh, do a little bit of, of kerning as well. Um, I am going to space that out a little bit because just kind of seeing how these are going. I'm just going back and forth. Actually, this might even just be a situation where I make the T and the A a little bit closer together. That can be a useful tool if, if this is your jam. Um, for me, I kind of cheat because I wear glasses. It's just easy to look over the top of my glasses and get this. Um, but if you need the software solution, it's there. And uh, I don't think anybody's going to blame you if you need to use that at all. 
Um, so already, I think we're we're getting some some good progress here. Um, now you could go through, and obviously, I will need to go through and and adjust a number of these. We've got things like the L and the V, um, and again, this is probably one of those deals where. Um, it's just going to be a little bit of trial and error on my part, just figuring out how much these need to overlap a little bit, and then going through and then finding a character that matches this um, if it's applicable, and just assigning it to the group here. Um, so there are things uh, out there, there are resources, I can link that in the comments below, um, potential kerning pairs or, or kerning uh, guides out there to help you along with this. Um, and I certainly recommend using them. I'm, for the sake of this uh, episode today, um, I'm just kind of going off of book and just doing some selected pairs. I'm not planning to go through and do my entire typeface. Uh, we'd be here for a while if I was doing that. Um, so we'll avoid doing that. Now, there are things like the G here where looking at this, it seems okay, but... Um, this is where you start to fall down a rabbit hole a little bit. So it's very tempting to see something like this and think that you would need to kern that. Um, and it's possible, depending on your design, that that may be a, a thing that you need to kern. But really what I'm seeing here is that this might benefit a little bit from some space, perhaps on this side, because the, the G to the H feels a little bit tighter than the H and the G. Um, but I think what I'm going to do, rather than go down that path of, of trying to kern that, is um, I'm actually going to just revisit my spacing a little bit. As far as I can see, I think this has more to do with that than kerning. And I think what I'm going to do for that is I'm actually going to do a little bit of a math problem there. Because I think it, it's falling somewhere between a round shape and a straight shape. And I'd rather go this route than, than try and figure it out otherwise. I'm also going to take a look at the C2 while I'm at it. Because sometimes this can fall into that trap. The C is a little bit different though because I do have a lot more open space here. Um, but this is something that you want to look out for. You don't necessarily need to go through and, and use kerning to fix these things. And if anything, I would argue... See if you can fix it with side bearings first before you start jumping into uh, trying to kern that. And um, actually, we'll just do one more here. If I test it against a round letter here, because really I'm just testing it against a couple different extremes, and it seems like this feels a little bit more balanced. Um, I might even just bump it down just a little bit there. And again, I need to get this into some text too to see how this is going to flow. But for the sake of this episode, for the sake of what I'm showing here, I think this is is going to do for now. So, the, I mean, that's effectively kerning. Um, and I also need to go through and uh, see what's up with my side bearings here. It appears to be the heavyweight. Um, that is the thing that I have noticed with, with um, this, is that uh, sometimes, yeah, it doesn't carry over into the heavier weights because it doesn't know if there should be a change here. The good part is, is that it will keep your groups, or it should keep your groups across. So we'll test that theory right now. Um, and I think for this, I'm just going to start, yeah, that was negative 80. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna use negative 80 for the start here. That seems fine. I know the Y had it too, so. Yeah, that appears to be carrying that over well. So that is something you need to keep in mind, is that you will have to go through and adjust these um, to your taste, because it's it's not going to carry over. Um, there may be scripts out there that do that, but I'm not aware of, of any of those at the moment. Uh, one thing I am going to do, though, that I just saw here, um, which apologies if whenever I did this that you might have been one of those people to notice that my points were a little bit wonky at the top there, but... Let's go ahead and get that all cleaned up right now. I think that actually... Yep, that shares a spot. I think that looks alright. 
So sometimes you still have to tweak uh, characters a little bit. But uh, I mean, for the most part, that's that's one thing that I really appreciate is that you can go through, you can set up these kerning groups in one place. And if you have multiple weights, and, and when I'm referring to multiple weights, I'm referring to multiple masters, not necessarily instances of the typeface. Um, but it's easy to go through and just keep those kerning pairs together um, and, and to be able to uh, adjust those accordingly. So um, let's see if we can maybe jump into a couple more here. So uh, again, F here. Um, now for this one, the first thing I'm going to actually try is not its own kerning pair, but I'm actually going to start with the V because actually that gets us pretty close. Um, this might be a situation where I, I might revisit this later, but it gets me off to a good start because it does kind of share this empty space down here a little bit. Um, we do have the crossbar here that, that does meet the A a little bit closer, but I think there was enough open space in the shape of my F here that I'm going to get away with it. Um, let's see, I did get the LW too. So those are some other tricks as well. Sometimes, uh, depending on how you design your typeface, you can get away with, with something like this. Um, Typically, if I am doing kerning groups like this, I do try and share as much as possible at the start. It helps kind of get a broad uh, group of pair of kerning groups or group of kerning pairs, if I get this right, uh, down. And then from there, as I start going in and proofing this more, seeing how it lays out in text and how it's reading and whatnot, um, rather than using zero as my starting point, I can use something like the uh, V for the F as a starting point. It gets me a lot closer and then just allows me to kind of dial it in uh, on a little bit more uh, quicker basis if if we go that route. Um, there are characters like the B as well. Uh, again, for this one, I'm probably going to give it its own kerning group just because I don't, at, at least offhand, I don't think I've got too many characters that are going to to wrap around like that. But again, the B doesn't really need a whole lot, just a little bit there. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? The A and the P, again, this is another good one. Um, and for this one, making sure that I select the P instead of the A, I might start with the V. So this is a case where that's probably not gonna work, but I know that 80 is pretty close to where I wanna be. I'm actually just gonna bump it back to 60. We're gonna try 72 and see maybe that works a little bit better. So it's a little bit less, but at the very least, it, it, it was a very quick way to kind of give me an idea of where I was at. Actually, I'm gonna split the difference and go 65. Um, so rather than having to kind of mu uh, muck around with that and, and try and figure out um, if, if it's working or not, uh, I, I kind of enjoy doing that. And sometimes it's a little bit more obvious to your eye. Sometimes it's not so much obvious. Um, if it isn't obvious, just leave it, make a note, and then come back to it and just see how you feel with a fresh pair of eyes or put it into some text, into some uh, paragraphs or sentences or headlines, uh, however you're designing your typeface, and just, just give it a, a little bit to um, marinate and just kind of see how it feels to you, because sometimes that extra perspective uh, might might shift your way of thinking one way or the other. Um, so that, I mean, is more or less kerning in a nutshell. Um, it's one of those things where it really doesn't get too difficult, but it does get very time consuming. And uh, like I said, there are some common kerning pairs, but really your mileage is going to vary with any uh, set of kerning pairs that you might find because it all depends on how you designed your typeface. And, um, you know, if it's something like a condensed, uh, more squarish or blockish one, you might not be doing even any kerning at all. This might just be pure side bearings, um, which I usually do recommend for uh, those starting out, just trying to get a feel for the letters and whatnot. So hopefully that was helpful uh, for you. Um, as always, if you're enjoying this series, uh, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, if you've been following along in this series and you have been designing your own typeface as well, I would love to hear from you. Um, I do think we are kind of winding down with this one just a little bit. Um, I am kind of looking forward to uh, what I might be producing next on the channel. Um, I'm certainly considering uh, obviously doing another uh, typeface design of some sort. Um, but I am also curious about uh, if anybody else has been following along and doing this as well. Perhaps we could uh, do a little bit of a critique on here. Um, I'm also considering looking at other typeface design programs as well. Um, obviously, this one's been in glyphs, but there are a number of options out there depending on your budget or your comfort level or your operating system or whatever the case might be. 
Um, so I think it'd be fun to kind of uh, just break out of our shell a little bit and, and take a look at a few things. So if you have any other comments or ideas or even suggestions for the next typeface that I should do, um, I definitely want to get that out there now. Please, please, please leave a comment below and uh, let me know what you would like to see. So uh, with that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode.